Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Suku pre-summer collection. So I received three items in PR, so we're going to be going through those. The collection doesn't launch yet. I'll have all of the dates for all of the different retailers down below in the description box. We're also going to take a look at the new YSL All Hours Hyper Finished Face Powder and the new Chikahoto Ren Series. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with the YSL powder. So this is the YSL powder and I took a look at the bronzer in my last video and you can see that the packaging is the same aside from the color here. So the bronzer has brown, the powder has black. And other than that, the packaging is the same except here on the powder, this actually flips open and you have a sponge applicator. The bronzer appears to have the same packaging except this doesn't actually open. So it looks like it would, but I tried prying that open, it just doesn't. So this is just a foam sponge here. We do have a mirror on here. And I purchased shade one. Now this comes in shade translu translucent, which is the white powder that you often see. And then there's a whole shade range of colors that go from light to deep. So you can definitely pick whatever you prefer. So I picked shade one and can see it is going to be a light powder here if you pile this up it's a little bit deep a little golden let's go ahead and take a look at how this blurs on my hand so first here's my hand you can see the veins it's gonna go over that and you can see that there is a blurring effect with this powder let's move on to the demos while we discuss it this powder has seven and a half grams of product. It has a two year shelf life and it is made in France. There is a soft fragrance in here. It smells like a white floral fragrance, but it's pretty soft. It's not like super noticeable. Now, according to YSL, it says finish mattify cover. The YSL multi-use powder provides a flawless natural matte result. Long wear natural matte blurred complexion, all day buildable sheer to medium coverage. Feels weightless, controls shine, blends seamlessly into skin. It's infused with hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and lameda extracts from YSL Beauty Eureka Community Gardens. Now, my particular hope with this powder was that if I purchased shade one instead of shade zero, this would have enough pigment that I could also use it as a face powder like a face powder foundation type of powder versus just a setting powder. But I don't think that's really the ideal purpose for this powder. This is definitely going to give you, it gives you a little bit of a blurred finish. It will give you some camouflage with the pigmentation, but I feel like this formula itself is not meant to be built up to the level of you know coverage that you would need for a powder foundation product because when you do build it up to that level, it looks a little bit dry. So I think this is best used with a light dusting and you can either use a brush for that and you can see in the demos, I am using the Ren Powder Brush One and you could also use the sponge applicator. So the sponge definitely is gonna give you more coverage. It actually gives you a really beautiful finish. You're going to get a little bit more coverage from the pigmentation but that blurred effect also goes on very evenly. So sometimes with sponge applicators, with powders, especially if you're using it on top of foundation, you can get like patchiness, but I have not experienced that with this powder. So I have to say, I think it's a nice powder. It is not as blurring as some powders that I have used and recently discussed. Uh, for example, the new Clay de Peau setting powder and the new Burberry, I do feel that they are slightly more blurring than this YSL, but what the YSL has that the others don't is a little bit more coverage with the pigmentation level. So if you are looking to, you know, kind of even out your complexion a little bit more, I feel like this powder does that more successfully than the Clay de Peau or the Burberry. Now, although not shown, I did test this powder underneath foundation to see if it had a blurring effect that was visible, but honestly, I couldn't really tell any difference. I do think that this is definitely best used as a setting powder on top or even a finishing powder if you want a matte finish to your makeup. But I do think it gives a really lovely soft filtered effect on your skin with just enough camouflage to kind of even things out. So I think it's a really beautiful powder and I'm very happy with it. So I just wanted to compare a few powders to the YSL 
And this first one here is the Sisley Fudo, Fido Pudra Compact in number one, rosy. So this is one of my favorite setting powders. It does have a little bit of color, but this is gonna be a bit more of a rosy shade. So here's the YSL and here's the Sisley. The Sisley, the texture of it's a little different. So as you can see, you know, I've used mine with a brush over the time. So I definitely have kind of a textured finish on here, but it's pretty firmly pressed yet very silky. The YSL has almost more of a velvety texture to it, a slightly more powdery feeling when you swipe it across the skin, yet there really isn't any excess powder. There's no like kick up or anything like that. So just texturally, it's a little bit different. You can see that the YSL is definitely going to be warmer than the Sisley. I think they both give a very beautiful effect to the skin. And I would have to say out of all of my powders, and out of all my powders, I would have to say that these two are the closest in terms of how they look on the skin when you use them as a setting powder because they're both gonna give you a little bit of evenness to the complexion. The Sisley comes in, a, you know, I think there are only four shades in this. So I have the rosy, which gives you a slight pink hue to it. Uh, whereas you've got skin tone shades in the YSL, but they are going to have that similar like blurred, even complexion kind of look to the skin. And then here's the Burberry in 01 Fair. So the Burberry, we do have kind of the, uh, you know, colored pigmentation powder around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and swipe that separately. So here's the YSL, here's the Sisley. Let's put the Burberry. This is the pigmented powder portion right above. And you can see it's gonna be more ivory, it's lighter. This has more of a silky pressed pigment feel. When you mix it with the white, we're gonna put that right next to it. You can see it's gonna get a little bit whiter. And it's really this white powder in the center that gives you the most blurring from the Burberry. So I think that's gonna be our biggest difference. But again, this feels very silky like a pressed pigment versus a velvety powder texture like the YSL. And again, even though the YSL feels velvety, there's really no kick up or excess powder that comes up. So it's still firmly pressed. And last up, this is the new Clay de Poe pressed powder. So it's new to the US. And you can see that this comes in, I mean, it's just the translucent shade. So we don't have a range of shades in here. This is kind of like the Burberry when you mix the white and the pigmented shade together, but it's an even silkier formula to it. And yeah, other than that though, I would have to say those powders in general give you a kind of similar finish, but definitely the YSL and the Sisley are going to be the closest on the skin in my opinion. So in summation, I would have to say, if you're looking for a setting powder or even something to use as a matte finishing powder and you want to even out your complexion and you know you don't want to see any other colors, you're not trying to enhance like a rosy tone or anything like that, the YSL is a great option for that. Again, you do have the translucent version as well, which I have not tried, perhaps it has more blurring than the pigmented version. But I think the YSL really excels at that. The Sisley is gonna do kind of the same thing, but it's going to enhance certain tones. So they've got the rosy shade and then they have some deeper, more skin tone like shades. The Burberry and the Clay de Poe are really more focused on blurring than either of those. So I think these give you a bit more blurring all right, so let's go ahead and move on to the Suku pre-summer collection. I'll put a photo up here of the entire summer collection. So I received three items, and this here is the eyeshadow quad in 137. You can see we've got beautiful purples here, some like pinky purples, and the whole collection is called Blossom Bee, and it's inspired by like garden markets and things like that. So, you know, this palette I think is gorgeous. The other eyeshadow palette is gonna be more uh, pink and coral. So we start off with kind of this soft lavender shimmer. And there's a little bit of pigmentation on this, so it is something that you could use on the eyes uh, without a base. Then we have a very soft kind of lilac matte, and you can see that this lavender here is going to be a little bit more blue-based, but there's still kind of that 
pinky plum base to it. It's just not going to be as much as this next shade here, which is more of an orchid pink. So we've got that and that's going to be matte. And then our last shade here you can see is going to be a little bit of a sort of a duochrome. I don't think it has enough uh, you know, light reflection to really truly be considered a dual chrome. I'm going to add a little bit more on here, but we do have this deep purple and there is blue and purple uh, glitter or shimmer in here. So you can get a little bit of a color reflect from that, but I don't think it's that noticeable. Now looking at this, you can see that the purple, the deep purple here has a little bit of a reddish base to it. So just something to note here. But overall, we have a balance of purple hues that have, some have a little bit more blue, some have a little bit more pink. So it's pretty balanced. Now, in addition to the two eyeshadow palettes, there are also two eyeshadow crayons, which are new to Suku and those are limited edition. I don't have either of them, but there is one that has kind of like that pinky shade. It kind of reminds me of this orchid shade in there. I'd like to pick that up. And then there's also a bright yellow. So I'm curious about those. Now, the next item I received here is the Pure Color Blush in 148. So Suku, you know, these are meant to be light, but we've got a deeper blush shade here that can really be built up. So here you can see it's a little bit of a deep brick rose. And let me just kind of mix these two shades together here. If you use them mixed, this is what you get, and that's gonna be a little bit shimmery. So the left side here of the palette is going to be a more matte blush. I'm just cleaning off where I mixed that. And then this right side here is intended to be a highlighter, and this is a beautiful lavender shade. And you can see it's gonna be a little bit more of a pinky lavender. So left, mixed, and right and let's just go ahead and kind of buff those out as well so here is the highlighter if you kind of buff that in the blush and highlighter mixed and just the blush so you can definitely get kind of a soft glimmer to it as well but i would have to say that both of the blush selections appear to run fairly warm this lilac highlighter though is going to be a little bit cooler. And then we have two new limited edition shades of the Moisture Glaze lipstick. And I have shade 102, which is our soft pink. And I think it's a really pretty shade. I do think that this shade is going to sell it quickly. It's limited edition. It's kind of a soft peachy rose shade, a little bit more peach. So this is gonna run a bit warm as well. And then the other option you can see is a bit deeper. Let's move on to the eye swatches and the demos. So as we're looking at the eye swatches, I did things a little bit differently this time. I did the right eye dry shadow each time I used the Tansado shader brush for that. And then I used the Sonia G Worker Pro on the left eye. And with that, I dampened the brush each time, which is the bottle I knocked down just a couple minutes ago. So I dampened the brush so we would have a wet application. So when you're looking at both eyes together, you're seeing the same shade, but you're seeing dry on the right eye and then wet on the left eye. Now, according to Suku, we have two beautiful limited edition palettes inspired by the vibrancy of florals from whimsical wildflowers to freshly made bouquets. These quads feature soft tonal shadows to amplify eyes, and there's no risk of creasing or caking. So we have 136, which is the Flourish Pink and Blooming Pink quad. That's the one that looks a bit more coral based. And that is described as a pink tone palette that although monochrome layers together to bring different textures and saturation. I think it's really beautiful. I'm tempted to get that one, um, but I haven't decided yet. Now 137 is what I have here. And this is described as pansy purple and sweet violet. It's unified by a purple hue. This palette adds shimmy and depth that is reminiscent of lavender. I have to say, I think it's a really beautiful palette. Now, this collection is available at Selfridges as of March 21st, and then it'll be available at Harrods and Liberty London on April 4th and April 18th at Cult Beauty. 
So we have a few different release times to kind of pick up what you can. I do expect the purple quad to sell out pretty quickly as well as the lipstick in shade 102 that I have here. So if you're interested in those, just keep those in mind, keep an eye out. Now, one of the issues with purchasing things at some of the retailers like Harrods, Liberty, and Cult is that they don't necessarily always have the largest selection or quantity, so they can sell out very, very quickly, and sometimes we don't even see them show up online. So just something to note there. So Selfridges is the best, but if you don't have the Selfridges global shipping option, definitely you know consider checking things out at the other retailers. Now, if you're interested in pre-ordering the collection from Selfridges, then you can get free shipping if you purchase, I forget what the minimum is, it's something like 150 pounds or euros. Uh, I don't remember which, to be honest, <laughs> um, but you can get free shipping at that point. But you have to order only Suku items. And if you are interested in that, I'll leave the email address down below in the description box, but suku.london at eqpuk.com. So overall, I have to say, I think it's a really beautiful palette. You can definitely get a more pigmented application with the wet application versus the dry. However, even with the wet application, you still get kind of that soft focus look on the eyes with these shadows. So they're always gonna give you kind of that soft hue that just really makes me think of a freshly blooming flower in spring. So I think it's a really gorgeous palette. One of the great things about this palette, in my opinion, is that our kind of topper shade that we typically have in the palettes is, it's not as translucent as some that we've seen in the past or as most of the ones we've seen in the past. So there is a little bit of color to that. And I'm talking about, this is the first shade in the palette here. So it is deep enough that you can wear it on its own with maybe a nice brightly colored eyeliner. I also think the two matte shades, although very soft on the eye, they are really beautiful. So they are great for one and dones as well, or even just adding that shimmer on top. Now the deeper shade that in my opinion, looks so special in the pan. On the eye, I don't really see that much of a color reflect and it, I really don't see enough uniqueness to that one. So that one falls short a little bit for me, but I had very high expectations for that shade. Now, all of these shades blend beautifully and they perform very nicely. No issues with creasing or fallout or anything like that. So I have to say, I think it's a really nice palette overall. So I would recommend this one. Now, before we move on to the blushes, just some information about the eyeshadow sticks. So these are called the Bloom Eye Sticks, and according to Suku, they are limited edition cream shadow sticks that blend seamlessly and can be worn alone for a wash of color across the lid or used as a liner for a pop of accent color. So we have shades 101, Powder Lilac, which has a hint of white. This lilac shadow is inspired by soft petals. And then we have 102 Lime Yellow, which is a soft green with hues of yellow. This creamy shadow is inspired by the leaves of a flower. So I am going to try to purchase both of those. They seem really intriguing. And although I wasn't as interested in the yellow one, once I got this palette, I really think that that yellow lime green kind of shade would be a fantastic accent to this purple eyeshadow. So I'm very eager to get that one now. Moving on to our pure color blushes. Now, as we're looking at the pure color blushes, again, I have shade 148, and there are two shades available. They are both limited edition. So these limited edition shades are inspired by the vibrancy of a flower market. Two highly pigmented matte blushers that fade into rich pearlescent highlighters create depth and light on the complexion. And 148 is the one that I have, and it's described as a combination of red blush and pink highlight with a touch of blue pearls. Leaves a healthy flush on the face. Bring up to the temple to create unity with your eye look. Now 149 is the one that I don't have, and that one is supposed to be a bit more bronze tone. So we have a bronze tone blush with red undertones to create a sun-kissed complexion. And the warm blush fades into a highlighter that's filled with gold pearls to evoke a sun-drenched glow. So that one would probably be very pretty as a soft bronze look, but I was more interested in this red blush with the pinky purple highlight. 
I have to say, I think the pinky purple highlight turned out really well, so I'm very happy with that. The red blush can definitely go on very beautifully and very softly, but it is a little bit warmer in tone than you know i was hoping i would i would have liked to see something a little bit cooler in tone for the blush shades on one of these two blush palettes they're both pretty warm so i think they're both beautiful and i really like the one that i have but with this eye palette i think i would tend to go for a brighter pop of like a pink or a very soft cooler tone pink that being said, the highlighter shade in this blush palette goes on beautifully above the eyes as well and really complements this eyeshadow palette. I also think that it just looks stunning on the cheeks and it gives you kind of that soft pearlescent finish. It's still pretty subtle. You don't see too much color, but you still see enough to make it something special. And let's take a look at the uh, Moisture Glaze lipsticks. So these Moisture Glaze lipsticks are a new addition to Suku. They just recently released their lineup, the permanent lineup, and I have a video on those. I picked up quite a few. I love these lipsticks. I mean, I think they are seriously, they're one of the best lipsticks. They're one of my very favorite formulas now. So I'm very happy that they are expanding this range with a couple of limited edition shades. And I am hoping to get the other shade as well. So these are described uh, uh, by Suku as two limited edition shades that join Suku's newest lipstick launch, a formula designed to glaze the lips for a plump and glossy look. The moisture glaze lipsticks have a rich balm-like texture that melts into a beautiful wash of color. One of the reasons I absolutely love this formula is because they also give you a little, a little bit of blurring to the lips. They kind of camouflage, the glossiness camouflages fine lines and lips instead of enhancing them, which is, I think, not that common in this style of lipstick. So I love that. I love the fact that they're fragrance-free as well. So we have two shades. 101 is the one that I do not currently have. It's inspired by red tulips. This shade is a pretty brick red with a soft sheen. And then 102, I think is gonna sell out pretty quickly. And this is described as a neutral pink beige that wears well every day. And I do think it's a great everyday shade, but I would describe this more as a soft peach, maybe even like a touch of coral in there, but it's definitely mostly a peachy shade in my opinion, with mixed with just a tiny bit of a warm rose. So, I think it's a really beautiful shade, but again, just like with the blushes, I feel like having such a cool tone eyeshadow palette with the purple color story, we are missing a cooler tone lipstick option. So I do wish that there had been something a little bit cooler in tone to mix with that. That being said, I doctored mine up with the topper shade from the eyeshadow palette and I added a little bit of that to the lipstick and it cools it off. And I think it looks very beautiful with this particular eyeshadow combination. So I think, you know, the lipstick itself though is a great everyday shade, but as much as you can mix cool and warm tones on the face, I still would have liked to have seen some cooler tone options for the blush and the lipstick. So let's take a look at a few comparisons. Now for the eyeshadows, we are going to take a look at two different palettes here. So first up, we have the Dior L'Atelier Mauve. So you can see here that we do have kind of a similar vibe to it with kind of these purple hues and the pinks in there. The Dior, however, is gonna be lighter and it's gonna be pinker in tone. So I'm gonna put these directly next to the Suku so we can kind of compare them, but you can see that we start off with a very light kind of pearly pink with a touch of lavender shade. I love that shade. Then with Dior, we move into kind of a soft pale pink, very, very pale pink there. And that is more of a satin shade. In the middle for the Dior palette, we have a warm pink, which we don't really see in the Suku palette. The Suku is definitely gonna be cooler overall. Then we have a very light pearly pink. This is gonna be cooler in tone, but it still doesn't really match up with anything here. And then our last shade here is going to be more of a uh, matte purple, like a lavender purple. It's kind of a combination of these two mattes in the Suku. You can see it's really just those two mixed together. So I'm just gonna swatch the shades that are most similar to each other together. So we have this first shade, 
from the Dior, we'll put this down here, which is going to be most similar to the topper shade from Suku. Put that right there. So you can see how similar those are. The Suku is actually gonna be a little bit more blue-based and it's gonna be more shimmery, whereas we've got more pink in the Dior. And then this purple here is going to be kind of like a mix of the two mattes from the Suku. So let me go ahead and mix those. So here those are mixed and you can see that if you do a 50-50 mix, the Suku's a little bit more blue, but if you just add a little bit more of that orchid shade, the third shade from Suku, you're going to be able to get that exact match. So if you miss out on the Dior L'Atelier Mauve, I do think that the Suku is a really great option. The pink shadows that are missing from this, I'm sure you can find those easily in other places. You probably already have them. We've had so many pink tone palettes that have come out recently but I feel like the purples are the ones that were harder to duplicate. And I think that this gives you a really great option, really good alternative there. And then the other palette I wanted to compare, this is the Suku 126 that came out last summer. And it's one of my favorite palettes. We do have a pretty purple, but we also have a lot of pink tones in here. So we're gonna just go ahead and swatch this one right up here vertically. You can see that our first topper shade here, it's gonna be one of those more translucent shades that I mentioned. Then we move into kind of a dusty mauve. And then this purple, this is more of a duochrome here, but you can see we've got this beautiful like lavender with pink and blue, and it really has a radiant metallic finish to it. And then our last shade here is going to be more of a deep, a deeper uh, reddish mauve. So that's one, two, six. And here is the Suku in one, three, seven. So we do have some similarities, but this is definitely gonna be a bit more red based overall. And I think the finish is very different on that duochrome shade versus what we have here, which is really gonna be more of a satin matte with glitter in it versus a duochrome, in my opinion. Now, moving on to the blush, this is 148. This is one of the melting powder blushes that came out last year. This is 105, and this is that pinky lilac shade. It sold out pretty immediately. So here is the lavender highlight in the new blush. So I wanted to show you how those compare. You can see that the melting powder blush is definitely gonna be more pigmented and it's a little bit cooler in tone, but it is going to have a similar vibe to it. So although this one is a little bit too light and too sheer to use as a blush, like you can with the melting powder blush, it is a good alternative if you've been looking for that shade. Now, this is the Melting Powder Blush in 07, also discontinued, but this was the one with the closest shade to this redder shade here. You can see that this is gonna be a little bit warmer. We've got a little bit more orange in it than the Pure Color Blush. Now, you can see that the Melting Powder Blushes in general are a more pigmented formula than the Pure Color Blushes, which are really meant to be more of a soft wash. And then I just wanted to compare, this is 135 from the Pure Color Blush. This came out for holiday, um, not this past season, but I believe the season before. So I wanted to compare this purple with it. And you can see this is gonna be more of a matte finish. It's actually um, a little bit firmer, harder to pick up. You can see it, you know, kind of have some hard pan on mine. Um, but this is gonna be more blue-based. And honestly, this one is really hard to see. It's just such a very light, sheer shade. But I did wanna compare that in case anybody has that. And then this is 147, which is from the most recent launch. So new one's 148, previous one is 147. You can see we also have kind of this lavender shade that we get, uh, and this was kind of with more of an orangey shade here. Now, this is gonna have a more matte finish. And let's go ahead, we'll put it underneath the buffed portion here. But you can see how that compares. Let me do that one more time. All right, so this is the 147, this is the 148. Let's put these together right here. So 
old versus new. You can see that the new one has a bit more red in it. It's also a little bit deeper and it has more of a pearly sheen, whereas the one from 147 uh, definitely is a little bit more of a true soft lavender without that reddish hue in there, but it's also gonna have a more matte finish. But you can see that they are pretty similar still. So if you purchased 147 last time, if you're looking at just that lavender highlight, I would say that you don't need to get the new one. Now, the two shades I wanted to compare the lipstick to, these are both from Chantecaille Spring Collection. First, we have Rosia, and this is gonna be more of a warm pink. You can see it's gonna be deeper. And then we have Ginger Lily. And you can see this is also gonna be a bit deeper, and it's gonna be more of a coral. You can see we definitely have more of a peach vibe with the Suku. Now, this is the Sicily in Sheer Beverly Hills, which is also going to be kind of a peachy shade. You can see it's um, not quite as warm, but this is a really opaque peach. I actually don't like this one because it's not, it's actually not sheer. It doesn't have any translucency to it. But um, yeah, you can see that the Asuku is a little different from others than I have in my collection. And I really think it's gonna be a very wearable, nude, peachy kind of shade with a touch of warm rose in it. Uh, just a really great everyday shade. So let's go ahead and move on to the Chikahoto Ren series. So let's take a look at the Chikahoto Ren series. So this is a new brush series from Chikahoto. It's not currently listed as limited edition, but what we sometimes see with these that use the more rare hair types is they'll be available for a little while, they'll be marked as permanent, and then availability of the hairs becomes very scarce. And then it's a mad rush to get the brushes while you can before they become discontinued or become something that's like, a a release every few years. So just something to know, I think with brushes like this, if you're interested in any, in any of them, definitely keep your eye on availability. Right now they are very widely available and uh, there are no current indications of them going away anytime soon. But if you're interested, I would definitely try to purchase Earlier versus later, aside from the availability issue, we're seeing price increases all the time from brands, you know, whether it's in the brush community, the makeup community, clothing, whatever, everything is going up in price. So uh, definitely if finances allow, sooner versus later would be better for these brushes. So the handles themselves, it doesn't say officially what the wood is made out of, but to me, it appears to be walnut. And the hair, incredibly soft, yet has a little bit more kickback than you might expect. This is a blend of red fox and gray squirrel. Some websites do uh, say it is blue squirrel, but I believe the direct translation is gray squirrel. So the blend, you know, the blends can be really challenging to get right. So we're gonna talk a bit about these. But I have to say, I'm happy with the series overall. You can purchase the brushes individually or as a set. When you purchase the whole set at once, you don't really get a price discount on the set. You uh, can get like a, a free or almost free uh, brush roll, you know, a bag to hold your brushes in, but you're not actually going to get discounted brushes. So just keep that in mind. It's always better to pick and choose the ones that you're going to really use all the time versus buying a whole set if you're not really getting a discount there. So retailers, I purchased mine from Fude Bobo, but they're also available at Fude Beauty, CD Japan, Chikahoto directly. So you've got a, a few different retailers to choose from. So this is the number one powder brush. Now, if you're looking at the handle on one side here, it says Ren, and you can see it says zero one powder. We go down to our rounded kind of beveled edge here. And then on the other side, it does say Chikahoto. So here's number one, and then here's number two. So you can see number two is going to be smaller all around. And this is going to be our number two cheek brush. So you can see both of these are gonna be a round flat brush. We've got kind of this oval ferrule here and very, very soft. We'll talk about each of these individually in just a minute. Now here is number three, and you can see we also have a round flat ferrule here, so it's kind of oval, but you can feel it's a little bit of a sharper pinch here on the edges. 
uh, than the other two. And we have more of a triangular candle shape to this one. So this is angled, works really well under the eyes for powder. And this is actually your highlight brush. So it also works very well for highlight. So just so you can see how it fits on the cheek and we'll see that in the demos as well. But I think this is a really great brush. And then brush number four, this is an eyeshadow brush. And you can see how the size compares to the number three. This is a very large eyeshadow brush and you can see this and you may have already seen it in some demos and some other videos. But for me, it's a little bit too large for eyeshadow. I mean, not even just one and done because I can't say on just the mobile lid with this. If you want your shadow kind of in the entire area, this brush is good for that. You can also use this for powder underneath the eyes and for highlight. But I have to say, I do think that the uh, number three brush is more effective in those applications. So that brush for me, the number four, is my least favorite of the set. And then this one here is number five. This is the last one in the set. And although it might just look kind of like a, a regular crease brush, sorry, I've got a little powder on mine. Um, this is actually a really unique shape here. So this has kind of your candle shape. We have a round ferrule here. It looks like a crease brush, but with the way this one actually performs, it's a little different. So let's move on and take a look at each of these individually. So let's start off with the powder brush. And you can see here that it is soft, it is fluffy, and it really, you know, gives you a beautiful back and forth motion. You have a round fat ferrule, so back and forth sweeping motion is going to be most effective with this. It's dense enough that you can pat products on. You could do a swirly motion, but I do think that the shape impedes that just a little bit. So sweeping is gonna be a little bit more efficient. Let's look at the demos here and then we'll look at a few comparisons. Now, this brush is has a brush length of 167 millimeters with a bristle length of 52 millimeters. So it's a pretty sizable powder brush and we'll look at a few comparisons. I have to say, I think this is a really excellent powder brush. When you are using this, you feel not only how soft it is, but you do feel a little bit more um, resiliency in those bristles. So although it's going on very softly, like you would expect from a squirrel hair powder brush, you feel a little bit more resiliency in there, a little bit more kickback from the fibers, and that's the red fox in there. So it's a really beautiful blend, and I think they did an excellent job combining these in just the right ratio to kind of get that really softness, but that resiliency there that kind of stands up to products, and it's not gonna give you, you know, it's not, it's soft, it's fluffy, but yet it is not super airy, and it's also not floppy. So it's really, you know, it's pretty unique in my brush collection just because it kind of combines, you know, well, it is. It's a combination of a squirrel and fox here. So I think it, it really, you know, is a really nice blend. If you're looking to purchase a face powder brush and you've been on the hunt for the right one, this I think is a really good option. So it, is strong enough to put on, you know, more firmly pressed powders very easily, yet the looser pressed powders and loose powders also go on very nicely. So it's kind of, you know, the best of both worlds. I think it's a really beautiful powder brush. Yeah. So let's take a look at a few comparisons for size. This is the Kazan series. So this is my favorite Chikahoto brush series. This is the KZ01 powder brush. You can see it's a little bit more rounded than the new Ren series. And the brush head is gonna be a little bit different. You can see the Ren series is gonna be a little bit larger here. And our bristles, they start actually changing in length here whereas this has a more gradual thing. And we're actually starting to get the longer bristles all the way down here. So here's our Wren. And you can see that the KZ is a little bit airier than that. So slightly different here. I feel like they're both great brushes. Now, this is the most recent Zen series from Chikahoto, and this is the powder brush here. You can see we do have a very similar 
shape and style, but this is gonna be a little bit more narrow. It's also ever so slightly more rounded. And this, I mean, it glides on the skin beautifully. So, so for comparison, this, you feel this go on, it's very smooth. Everything kind of stays together. You know, it, it feels very densely packed. This is a little bit airier in terms of how that actually feels going onto the skin. So just something to know. So these are going to have a similar texture on the skin overall. This feels a little bit fluffier though than the Zen series, which just feels almost a little bit heavier, a little bit more dense on the skin. And just for comparison, this is the FO series, a Silver Fox from Chikahoto. We have the FO1 here, which is smaller, and the FO9. And let me put the Ren series in the middle here. You can see that these FO series are gonna be slightly more squared off than the Ren series. And it's gonna be more similar in size to the FO9, but the FO9 is going to be fluffier and airier overall. This is gonna be a fluffy powder brush. And this definitely has a little bit more, I mean, you can just see how it sweeps. So let's move on to the cheek, the number two brush. And I think this is an excellent brush for bronzer and blush. I've used this in several videos at this point, but let's take a look at a couple of demos here. This is essentially a smaller version of the powder brush that we just looked at. So we have a total brush length of 162 millimeters and 47 millimeters for the bristle length. So it's just five millimeters smaller, basically all around than the powder brush. As such, I think it works beautifully on the cheek for smaller applications of powder, for bronzer, for bl blush. I think it has a really great shape and size for that. So I think this is a really effective brush for those applications. Now we do have kind of that curved edge at the top and you might think, oh, is that stiff enough to really use just the tip of these bristles? Not really, it's gonna be a little bit fluffier. So if you're using it from the top and you're just trying to get like kind of a more targeted area for like contour or something, this is a little bit too fluffy for that if you're trying to be very precise with it. So this will blend that out beautifully and give you a kind of a soft finish there. But if you're looking for precision, this brush doesn't have quite enough resiliency for that. So it's a little bit fluffier than you would need for that type of application. That being said, again, you know, you could use this the same way the powder brush, you know, patting on products, a sweeping motion. Those are going to be your best methods for this blush brush. And I think it's a really great one. Let's look at a few comparisons. So this is the Zen cheek brush and sorry, mine dried a little bit to the side. So just ignore that. But you can see that the Ren is a little bit shorter and it's also going to be a little bit wider. So we kind of come out a little bit more triangular shape versus this more oblong shape of the Zen series. And you can see that our Zen, again, it's gonna be really great for sweeping things on. The longer bristles here are gonna give you a softer application than you get with the uh, Ren series. But because this does kind of fan out on the cheek, you get more precision in a sense with the Zen because you can see how the hairs kind of stay together. They have kind of their own attraction there, their own adhesion to each other versus the Ren that kind of fluffs and fans out at the edges. So just some things to note between the two of those. Also, shape-wise, this is pretty similar to the Beautylish Lunar New Year brushes. So you can see that, again, the Ren fans out a bit more than the Beautylish, but we do have a very similar shape and size. The Beauty Lush is gonna be thicker. This is gonna be more of a powder brush versus a blush brush. So this being a little bit larger makes sense here. Shape-wise though, they are pretty similar, but we have a little bit more densely packed uh, hairs here. You can see this is gonna be a thinner ferrule, which is gonna cause this to fan out. So you can see again, sweeping versus the Beautylish, and because this can this can actually do a more swirly motion a little bit more easily because it's almost round. And last up, this is the KZ2. So you can see, again, similar shape and size, 
but we have, it's a little bit round, more round in the KZ brush and the Wren is a little ever so slightly larger than the KZ. You can see it's slightly taller and you can see that the KZ is gonna be more flat on the top whereas we have this beautiful arch here on the Wren series. So you can see how this will kind of fan out and this again being kind of that more squared top this is going to be a lighter fluffier airier brush in general this is a very delicate brush so for people with oilier skin textures i would definitely recommend the ren over the kz but the kz is still my favorite brush series and the reason i say that is because the diameter of the hairs in the kazan squirrel they are thinner. So they're gonna goop up a little bit more with product. Uh, if you have an oily or skin type, your skin oils will get on that and can cause product to accumulate on that more easily than these. So just something to note there. But if you're looking for a very, something for very sensitive skin, you know, this is great. Now, all of these brushes from the Ren series can only be used with powder products. And just one more comparison with another Zen series cheek brush. This is the smaller cheek brush. You can see it's significantly smaller. This is a great blush brush. And it's basically a smaller version of this. But again, these bristles here have slightly more adhesion. Whereas these, because of the squirrel hair mixed in, they are going to be a little bit fluffier. Moving on to the 03 brush, again, we have kind of this tapered candle with the, um, you know, the oval ferrule here. So it's more of a pinch ferrule. So we've got a flat round here. And I think this is an excellent highlighting brush. Let's take a look at the demos. You can see that this performs really well under the eyes for powder because of that angle there. It's gonna get around the eyes, around the nose, in smaller areas very easily. You could even use this, you know, like to highlight the brow bone and so forth. It also works great for highlight and because of this angled shape here, if you want to cut contour into your face, this is something that you could use to kind of put that on. You could turn the brush to kind of blend that out. So this brush can actually be used for contour as well. And if you really wanted to, you could also use this for blush. So if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one cheek brush, out of all of the ones in this series, I think this one here, the number three, is the most versatile and can be used in the most ways. So it's definitely a highly recommended brush. Now because of its shape and because we do have shorter bristles here, it's going to give you a little bit more uh, kickback here. So it's gonna feel a little bit firmer. The bristles will essentially go back to their original placement a little bit faster. So they kind of flick back into place a little bit more quickly than the longer hair brushes. So this one has a total brush length of 150 millimeters and the bristle length has a max of 35 millimeters. So again, I think this is a really beautiful, versatile brush. Let's look at some comparisons. So as we're using this highlighting brush here, the number three, you could definitely sweep it on. You could pat this on. It's got enough density to do that. You can use these angles here. You can even use the point if you really wanted to get in here. It's a little large to do that, but if you're in a pinch, it works. But you can see how easily it glides around smaller places on the face. You can definitely cut in your contour here. You can blend it out with the larger portion, pat on blush. I mean, it's a very versatile brush. So I wanted to compare it to the highlight brush from the Zen series. And you can see this is gonna have a more oval shape versus our more triangular shape here for the Wren series. So this works great for applying highlight, but we do have longer hairs here. So you can see how this is on the skin, kind of has this slower sweep. It doesn't kick back to place as quickly, whereas we have a bit more snap back with the Wren. You can see how this snaps versus this, we have kind of, it, it's a little bit slower to move back. So although this is round, you can see that we do have some smaller fibers down here at the bottom. It's a very gradual slope to go up, but it's gonna have a more oval shape, whereas this is gonna be a bit more triangular, which I think makes it a bit more versatile. I also wanted to compare it to the KZ3, which is the cheek highlight brush in the Kazan series. You can see it's significantly larger. We have more of a candle shape, but we have a round ferrule here instead of the round flat. So this one here is 
fantastic a highlight it's fantastic at blush but it's much larger so it's not going to have as many purposes as the red series and this one here being all Kazan squirrel you can see we have a slower kickback here as well and it's going to be very soft and fluid on the skin and then this is the KZ5 from the Kazan series which is going to be more oval it's more similar to the Zen series, but you can see it's a little bit wider and shorter. So we've kind of changed the styles over the time. They have been sort of, you know, kind of making little updates with each series. And I have to say, I think that this shape here, the Ren 3 is perfect. And I'm very, very happy with this brush. Moving on to the Ren 4, this is the eyeshadow brush. And you can see this, we do have a bit of a stronger kickback here. So, you know, you can put this, use this on the eyes, kind of pat on, you know, underneath, powder underneath, highlight, so forth. Let's look at the demos. But I have to say, this brush, I, I don't love this one personally. I think it's a little bit too large for use on the eyes. And for patting in uh, the highlight, I think the Ren 3 does a better job of that. I think the shape helps with that. And I think this one having smaller hairs just gives it a little bit too much kickback. So it's not as soft and fluid on the skin as the Ren 3. So in that application, I don't really love it. Same goes for underneath the eyes. I feel like the Ren 3 feels a little bit more fluid on the skin than this does. So it has a softer sweeping motion. It just feels a little bit more like the brush is kissing your skin with the three versus this one, which just is a little bit too stiff for that. So I can see the stiff hairs being good for eye application, but in my opinion, it's just too large for my eyes. So um, this brush for me didn't really work out. It's still a really nice quality brush, but I think the size is a little bit awkward. I think it's gonna to be too large for most people on their eyes. So this one, I would have to say, is just not a favorite. Just for comparison, this is the KZ6, which is still my all-time favorite one and done eyeshadow brush. You can see, you know, the short hairs give it a little bit more kickback, but it's incredibly soft, and this size actually fits well uh, on the mobile lid, and yet we have some width here that allows it to be fluffy enough to go uh, in the crease as well. Whereas this is just gonna be larger overall, so it's a little bit too long, and yet the it's fluffy enough if these were shorter hairs to get in the crease, but it's a little bit awkward as it is right now. So uh, you can see the roundedness here though is really nice, but I would have liked to see that in shorter style. This is the Zen Series eyeshadow brush, which is, still a little bit shorter it's a little bit more narrow but this is a brush i think you know it feels a little bit more fluid so this works better i think than the ren 4 uh you know fits on the eyes a little bit better it's a little fluffy but it's still not a favorite all over eyeshadow brush for me and then this is the fo5 from chikahoto and this one here you can see we've actually got a fair amount of snapback for fox there but still not as much as the Ren. And you can see, again, size-wise, this is gonna be significantly smaller. And last up, this is the Ren 05. And although it might not look it, it's a very special brush. So this one here, look at how it works on the skin. You can see that we have kind of a strong core here. So although I'm getting this like sweeping motion here, really blending things out with the tip, it's still staying pretty strong through the majority of the body of this brush, making it work well in the crease. You can use this for accent. You can get that point in the inner corner. You could use this to dust shadow under the eyes. So let's take a look at the demos here. And I really think what makes this one stand out isn't so much the shape. We've seen the shape before, but the way this hair blend works with this shape really gives it a resiliency that we haven't seen before. So we've seen similar shapes before in things like the Surat Smoky Eye Brushes. Those are a bit longer, but those have a different intended purpose. We'll take a look at that. Those are definitely gonna be softer and airier compared to this. This really has a strong core, giving it 
a little bit more firmness in the center, which allows you to really get targeted placement. So I think this is a really, really interesting brush. I really like this one. Now this has a total brush length of 131 millimeters and a bristle length of 16 millimeters. So let's move on to just a few quick comparisons. Let's start off with the Surat Moyen Smoky Eye Brush. This is the medium size. So you can see here, this here also has kind of that candle shape, but you can see it's an airier brush. This is all gray squirrel here. And this is actually designed, you can see we've got the shorter hairs all the way down here. These brushes are designed to be used in the crease, but also to kind of blend shadows horizontally on the eyes. And so they're very soft and airy for that purpose. This is definitely not going to work that way. This has a bit too much structure for blending horizontally, but it works great in the crease. It's stiff enough that you can define your crease with it. It's not a fluffy crease brush. You can definitely target areas, go underneath the eyes, the inner corner, and so forth. So they're very different, although similar shapes. I do have the, the smaller one somewhere. Unfortunately, can't find it, but um, all of them are going to have these longer lengths in the Surat but again, a similar shape. The KZ08 pencil brush, you can see it was a similar shape to this one, but it's significantly smaller overall. And this one is best used for kind of like lining and inner corner. So this one here, having the longer br bristles and that strong core makes it a bit more unique. So as a matter of fact, it feels a bit more like a very soft version of the Refer 14 Max on the eyes. So if you've used this, we have a very strong core with, you know, kind of that structure in the center that really keeps it firm there. So it doesn't like flay out. You can see how that goes on the skin. Now you can see this is going to be more rounded versus the Ren series. And this is going to be softer. So it doesn't, it's not quite as strong of a core as the refer, but that's this brush. If you have it, it's going to give you the best idea of how this one feels. All right, so that is the entire Ren series. And I have to say, I am really happy with this brush series. So the KZ series is still my favorite from Chikahoto, but I do think I prefer some of these Ren brushes over the Zen series that came out most recently. I think it's really difficult to get, you know, a brush blend of different hairs done well. And I think that Chikahoto has really kind of perfected that. And this series, this was done under the guidance of Teshu Takamori, who is one of the master artisans, but we've got a new generation of brush masters who actually did the work on these. And I'm excited to see what they come up with. We have kind of a blend of tradition and innovation here. I think it's hard to get these blends right, and they did a great job. So personally, I think that the if you're trying to, if you want to try one of these brushes, I would tend to go with the number three. I think this is going to be your most versatile and I think it's really awesome. After that, you know, I would go with the one or the two, you know, it, I think it kind of depends what your personal purposes are, but they're very similar, just different sizes. And then the five. Personally, I would advise skipping the four unless you can see a need for it in your life. But for me, I can't really find a great purpose for this one. So I would skip the four. I think the rest of the brushes are fantastic, but my favorite would definitely be the three. I think it's a great brush to start with to kind of see the versatility and see what the hairs are like. So those are my thoughts on the Ren series. I'd love to know if you've tried these. Let me know what your thoughts are. Overall, I think we had some great things today. We have the Suku pre-summer collection. Again, don't forget to check the description box for all the details on that collection. And the YSL powder, I think, is a really nice option to even out your complexion. And the Chikahoto Ren series, I'm really happy with it. I think it's a great series. You'll definitely be seeing these brushes feature in many of my videos coming up. So stay tuned to see more from them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.